Welcome! This is going to be a three-part series about pole vector constraints, bane of some set of artists' uh, life. So what we're going to do in this first podcast is actually talk about IK handles and pull vector constraints in general. So if you are pretty experienced, this is probably going to be a very boring podcast for you, and you might want to skip ahead to the actual podcast where I'm explaining the different setups for planes versus locators. Um, if you are new to rigging or you just want a refresher on um, IK handles and pull vector constraints, then totally feel free to stick around and listen to me talk, basically. Um, all right, so let's get into this. So what is an IK handle, right? Um, it is basically, um, it stands for inverse kinematics, and basically it means that I can take an object that Maya creates and translate it around. So rather than having to do forward kinematics, or FK, where I rotate one and then have to go and rotate everything else accordingly, IK will figure it out for me. So I just translate a dude, a uh, Maya object, around in my scene and it figures out the rotates of my joints for me. So let's go ahead and draw one um, so we can see this in action. So since I am messing around with joints, I am going to be inside of the skeleton menu. And here we have the IK handle tool. And let's bring open the option box. So really the biggest thing here is what type of IK am I making? So for anything like arms, legs, uh, wings, ears, you can use the system pretty much anywhere that you want to. Um, but if there's a center joint that you want to have control over, then you're going to want to do an, a rotation plane or an RP solver versus a single chain or SC solver. And the main difference between the two is that rotate plane has a twist channel that we can affect through a pull vector constraint. So let's go ahead and apply this. I can draw it inside of the viewport by selecting where I want it to start and then where I want it to end. So I believe it's shift. Yep. Or if you have joints uh, sitting right on top of each other, sometimes that can be really aggravating to do because you'll end up selecting the wrong joints and then it won't actually draw the handle for you. So what we can do is we can hit the Y key to bring open the tool again, and I can actually do this through my outliner. So over here I have my joint chain uh, fully expanded. So I can click on the joint that I want to start with, and then since I'm on the Mac, I will command click on where I want it to end and it will go ahead and draw the IK handle for me. So this method I find a lot easier to do, um, drawing a IK handle through the outliner, just because I can actually see what it is drawing the IK on. I can dictate exactly where it's supposed to go. Cool, so now that I have this IK handle, I can tell right off the bat that it is a rotate plane because I get this circle at the top with this little white triangle. The triangle is telling me what direction my joints want to bend in. So when I actually translate my IK handle, I can see how my knee is supposed to be bending. That's what this triangle is dictating. So if you do not see this white triangle little circle thing above your joints when you draw your IK handle, make sure that you are drawing the right type. If you're drawing a single chain, we're going to end up running into errors when we try to apply our pull vector constraint. So cool, I now have an IK handle and I can translate him around. Awesome, I don't want an animator selecting an IK handle and moving it around. An IK handle is still a component of the rig, it's not an icon. So what we want to do is actually make a control for our animator. So we can go to create, and I'm just going to create a circle, something really simple. I just want to make it a little bit bigger, and then we can snap it to our joint. And to stay in clean habits, let's go ahead and freeze transforms on our icon. I'm going to bring back my outliner. So I can take my icon and I can command select on my IK handle, constrain parent, and let's maintain offset. Cool. So now when I translate my icon around, I am now affecting my IK handle. Awesome. That is a very valid setup for our animator. They would be happy with that. Except we don't have a way for them to control the knee. So how is the knee supposed to be facing? Where is it aiming? 
right? That's the whole point of doing this uh, rotate plane solver. We want to be able to twist our knee around. So to do that, we need one more icon. So let's go ahead and make another circle. And typically what people do is they'll take this, um, this icon and they'll snap it to the knee or elbow or whatever system they're working on and they'll just translate it away, modify freeze to stay clean, and then they'll take this icon and the handle, the IK handle, and they'll go up and do a constraint and they'll say pull vector. And we can see the joints have shifted and if we check them out, they did pick up rotate values. So if I undo past that, just to show, right now they're zero. So it's when I apply this pull vector constraint that my joints become unclean, right? And that's what the next two podcasts are going to address. How can we apply this pull vector, which I want, but still maintain good values, zero values on my joints? So let's go ahead and dive into the two methods that I have for that particular process.